Now, there is one word that you're really going to have to get used to when you start researching electric cars, and that is range. It sounds like a relatively simple term, and well, it is, but there are some complications to it. So let us clear the air. Firstly, the range numbers you'll see quoted in reviews and on the websites are simply saying how far a car will go between charges. These are independently assessed official figures, but they're basically done in a lab. So when you get in the real world, it will almost always be less. They give us a benchmark so that we can compare cars. Don't go and buy a car with a quoted 200 mile range and expect it to do a 200 mile journey without giving you a few squeaky bump moments. Now having a long range is clearly a luxury because it means you'll be charging less and you get more miles by having a bigger battery or a more efficient car. But do remember, bigger batteries in particular are really quite expensive. They also add weight to the car, which can in turn make your car less efficient. That means you'll really want to try and buy a car with the smallest possible battery for your needs. It will save you money and mean you use less power as you won't be carrying around heavy cells that you don't really use. So you really need to work out how much range you actually need to be comfortable. If say, for example, you do a 20 mile commute each day, you have a home charger and maybe your longest regular journey is to go and see a grandma 50 miles away. Well, this Vauxhall Corsa E will have plenty to spare in that instance. And you'll only need to charge once a week, if that. If you only do a couple of big journeys every year for a holiday, say, then don't forget you can stop at a rapid charger and top up. It is worth spending an extra few minutes plugged in every once in a while, rather than lugging around a big expensive battery all the time, just for a few special occasions. Now, a car like this Vauxhall Corsa E will charge at a maximum rate of 100 kilowatts. That means you can charge from 15 to 80% in about 30 minutes at a public charger. And of course, you don't have to wait with the car while it charges. Oh no, you can crack on with your life admin or grab coffee. Now, there are clever little ways that you can actually stretch your range to make your battery power go a little bit further. And one of them has to be one of my favorite features of driving an electric car. It involves your phone and preheating, and it is perfect on a day like today. Now, rather than coming out on a cold winter's morning and having to sit in your freezing cold car while it heats up or get your de-icer out and your scraper, instead, you can preheat the car from your app. You can sit at home in the comfort of your living room, drink in your cuppa. You can even do it from the comfort of your own bed while the car heats up, gets nice and toasty, ready for your arrival. It means the car is taking this energy to heat the car from the mains charger rather than the battery. So you use the car's stored energy for driving rather than defrosting. You can set this from the car's app or in the settings menu. It also works for cooling the car in the summer too. The app does quite a few clever little things, actually. Um, one of them is that you can set your car to charge during the night time, which means you can take advantage of cheap electricity rates. So what you could end up doing is actually charging your car for a couple of hours each evening instead of doing one big charge at the end of the week, which could end up saving you a decent chunk of cash. So hopefully you're now feeling more confident about what range you actually need and also more comfortable in choosing the right battery size to fit your lifestyle. You could say you're feeling more at home with your range.